So you want to start a podcast, but you're not sure if you need a full-blown studio setup or if you can just wing it with your phone. Don't worry, by the end of this video, you will know exactly what you need to hit record with confidence, from microphones to software, and you'll be able to make the best choice for your setup, whether you're at your desk or you're on the go. Let's start off by talking about which device you should choose. You can podcast from a computer, a mobile device, or even a mix of both, and each has its strengths. A computer setup offers more control and options for editing, so this is ideal if you're looking to fine-tune your podcast. A mobile setup is super convenient for spontaneous recordings or if you're away from your usual workspace. Starting with a mobile setup is a great way to dive in without a big commitment, and then later you can move on to a computer-based setup as your podcast grows. So in this video, first we're going to talk about the best podcast setups for for in-person and remote recordings, no matter how many participants you have. And then we will go over how to start a podcast on your phone if that's more up your alley. There are chapter markers along the bottom here if you want to skip to the part that interests you the most. Now, before we dive into equipment, let's talk about the two types of podcast setups. You have in-person and remote. An in-person podcast is when everyone's in the same room, which can feel more natural, but it is generally a more advanced and often more expensive option. With an in-person setup, you will need multiple microphones, an audio interface, and possibly some extra equipment to improve sound quality. A remote podcast is when you record from different locations using an online software. This is the easiest route for beginner and much more budget friendly. If you're just starting out, I suggest starting with a remote setup. You can always transition to an in-person setup later as you get the hang of things. So let me know in the comments, are you planning to start with a remote or an in-person podcast? Now, when it comes to equipment, let's start with the basics, microphones. Every person on your podcast needs their own microphone. Here are the two main types. USB mics plug directly into your computer, which makes them super simple for beginners, solo, or remote recordings. But for in-person podcasts with multiple mics, an XLR mic setup with an audio interface is best. An interface allows you to plug in multiple mics so that everyone's audio is captured on separate tracks. This way, you can edit out individual sounds like coughs, sneezes, background noises, without affecting the entire recording. My suggestion is to choose a mic that works with both USB and XLR, like the ATR2100X. This way, you're ready to expand or record from different locations. If you want something higher end, you can check out the Shure MV7 Plus. Also, make sure that the mic is compatible with your computer's USB port type. Whether it's a USB or a USB-C, you can also use an adapter for this. Be aware of your room's acoustics. Rooms with hard surfaces create unwanted echo and make the audio sound hollow. Record in a space with soft furnishings and add blankets and pillows to help dampen the sound. Even adding a foam windscreen to your mic can help reduce ambient noise. If you're recording with multiple people in person, you will need an audio interface. A standard two-port interface works if you're recording with two people. This has two XLR input jacks, allowing for two microphones. If you think you're going to host more than two people, consider an interface with more ports. It's better to have extra imports than to be limited in the future. I have a whole video on choosing the best audio interface for different setups, which I will link above. The Scarlett by Focusrite has options with different amounts of input jacks and features so that you're covered whether you're starting small or going big. Quick tip here, if you are monitoring the audio live, use a headphone splitter to allow multiple people to listen in on the recording. For solo or in-person recordings, you will need one computer. For remote recordings, I recommend that the host uses a computer and everyone else should also have access to either a computer, a phone, or a tablet. If you're interested in a recommendation, the latest MacBook Pro is great for recording and editing and it's portable enough to record anywhere. The software that I'm going to show you is web-based, so you can use it on any computer, but a newer and faster model will make things a lot smoother. For in-person setups, you will need a DAW or a digital audio workstation to capture your audio. Here are some options. Audacity is free and a solid choice for beginners. Adobe Audition is more advanced and GarageBand is super user-friendly if you're using a Mac. 
You would simply connect your audio interface to your computer and then select it as your input in the software. This setup will record each mic on separate tracks, which makes editing much easier. If you're recording video for your in-person podcast, record your audio and video separately and then sync them in post-production using a video editor like DaVinci Resolve or CapCut. Those are both free. Or for some more advanced features, you can consider Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Most editing softwares have an option to sync audio automatically, so just search for how to do this in your editor. As I mentioned at the beginning, starting with a remote setup is going to be a lot easier. And if you are doing a remote setup, you will need a remote podcasting software. My favorite is Riverside.fm. It is made for podcasting and it makes this whole process super streamlined and easy. Let me walk you through it. So head to riverside.fm on your computer, create a new account or log into your existing account if you already have one, and then you're going to create a new studio by selecting this drop down menu, selecting new studio, Name your studio something memorable like your podcast name. And then you can decide if you want to record only audio or if you want to record audio and video. I suggest recording both even if you're going for an audio only podcast because having video is going to allow you to create better social media clips to promote your podcast. When you're ready to record, you would press record. And on this page, you select all your equipment. So you would make sure that all your equipment is plugged into your computer. And then from the drop down menu, you would select what microphone you'd like to use. If you're recording video, you can also choose your camera here and you can actually connect your mobile camera as an external webcam for higher quality video. You would just scan this QR code and you'll be set up seamlessly. If you're recording with guests, everybody should use headphones. This is going to help prevent echo. However, if you don't wanna use headphones or you forget to use headphones, Riverside has an echo cancellation feature, which will use AI to remove that echo from your tracks. But headphones are still the best option for the clearest quality audio. If you select here that you are not using headphones, echo cancellation will be automatically enabled. Once you get into the studio, you'll see an option here to invite people to your recording. So you would just copy this link and send it to them or invite them directly by email and they will show up beside you here in the studio. They can click the link on any device, a laptop, a phone, or their iPad, and use that device to record. Now down here, you'll see the option to add your script onto the screen so you don't have to switch tabs during recording. You can monitor your audio levels along the side here. Try to keep it in the green or the yellow zone, but avoid the red. And then when you're ready to record, you would just hit record. During recording, Riverside automatically uploads each track to the cloud. You'll see it uploading right here so that after recording, you will have access to these high quality audio and video files directly on your browser. When you're done recording, you would just end the recording. Your recording will finish uploading to the cloud. And when it's ready, select view recordings. So on this page, you can preview your recording. And if you scroll down, you can download individual tracks to edit on an external editor. You can also head into the Riverside editor, and this is great because it's super user-friendly, it will streamline your workflow, and it's great for beginners. We're going to go over how to use the Riverside editor and even upload directly to Spotify and other podcast directories. We'll do all that at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around for that. And if you're liking this video so far, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up to let me know, and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. So yeah, that's the best podcast setup for a computer Computer, whether you're going solo, remote, or in person, but maybe that sounds like too much to you. Maybe it's too techy, or you're on the go and don't have room for all of the equipment. Here's how you can start a podcast from your phone instead. So the first thing that you want to do is download the Riverside app. I will link it in the description, and then you can create an account or just sign in if you already have one. Once you're logged in, you're going to swipe, and you'll see the option to create a new studio. Then you're going to give your studio a name. I would name it after your podcast and then select create. Now it's time to optimize your setup. So you will want something like a tripod to keep your video steady throughout the video podcast recording, or you can just rest it on something. You just don't wanna be holding your camera throughout recording. Once your camera is set up on the tripod, press record, and this is gonna bring you into a screen where you can check your camera view. You wanna have good lighting. So to do this on a budget, you can just sit facing a window and that will light up your face, or you can look into something like a ring light or a softbox light or a panel light. You also wanna keep your background clutter and distraction free. So don't have any dirty laundry in the background or an unmade bed. You want it to be nice and clean. You also wanna film this in landscape mode. When you're ready, select join. So this is the Riverside Studio where you would record your podcast. If you wanted to use an external microphone for your phone, you could definitely plug that in, use that for better quality audio. 
However, if you want to just use your phone microphone, I'm going to show you how you can enhance the audio to studio quality in post-production. If you wanted to invite somebody to record with you, maybe you have a co-host or you're hosting guests, you would just select these three dots, select invite people, invite a guest, and you can either send them this link or invite them directly by email and they will show up beside you in the studio here. Remind them to film in landscape mode. Now, if you don't have a really good background, you can add a virtual background. So just press this little wand button and you can choose any of these backgrounds right here and it will change your environment. How cool is that? You can also blur your background and you can change the camera settings. When you're ready to record, just press record and now you would record your video podcast. If you need to look off the screen to check your notes or if you wanted to have a laptop here with your notes on them, people are very forgiving of that for video podcasts. Now, if you mess up a line or a word, just start the sentence again. This is going to help your video podcast flow more in post-production. Now, when you're done recording, you would just select end and that recording will upload to the cloud. Now we're gonna head to riverside.fm on our computer, head into the same studio where we recorded this video podcast and we can edit it from there. So now I'm on riverside.fm on the web, and you can see here that I've signed into my account that I used to record the video. I've gone to the same studio that I recorded the video in, and my video is right here, ready for me to edit. So I'm just going to highlight over the thumbnail and select it. On this page, you can preview your video, and you can also download the high quality audio and video files to edit externally, or you can streamline the whole editing process by heading into the Riverside editor. Select create new edit. So some things that you can do in this editor are take out mistakes. So you can highlight over the section you want deleted and press delete on your keyboard. That will delete that section out of the final video podcast. So go through your podcast and delete any mistakes that you made throughout the recording. Then you can head up to AI producer and there are a bunch of AI tools here that are going to help you edit your podcast super quickly. So this set pace feature is going to let you remove as much or as little silence as you want. For a video podcast episode, you wanna keep a bit of that authenticity. So I recommend a balanced sound. Then you can also apply smooth speech. So this is going to take out any filler words like um or ah uh, or any unwanted sounds. Then if you did have two people in the recording, you will have separate tracks for each person. And if that is the case and you're hearing maybe some echo in your recording, you can use magic mute and that's gonna mute people when they're not speaking. Now, if you use your phone mic to record, I recommend using magic audio. This is going to enhance your audio track to studio quality. So this is what my video sounded like before using Magic Audio. Mess up a line or a word. Just start at the beginning of the sentence. And this is what it sounded like after. A line or a word. Just start at the beginning of the sentence. Now at this point, you could actually export your video podcast. You can export it in an up to 4K depending on your phone's recording capabilities, but you can also add some other elements in order to pull the viewer along. So you can do things like add an intro and an outro. You can also add captions. This is going to help pull the viewer along and make your video podcast accessible to everyone. You can add things like image overlays and text overlays to emphasize key points with visuals. And you can even add music and sound effects to design the sound in your podcast a little bit more thoroughly and convey any emotions that you want conveyed throughout the episode. When you're ready to export, you would just select export, select go to exports, and you'll see your full edited video podcast exporting right here. Once it's exported, you can select it. And on this page, you can preview your video podcast. This is going to help your video podcast flow more in post-production. Now, when you're done... You can download it directly to your computer to upload to your podcast hosting site, or you can publish it directly to Spotify through the Riverside and Spotify for Podcasters integration. You would simply select publish to Spotify, and then you would be walked through the process of uploading this episode to your existing show on Spotify for Podcasters or creating a new Spotify for Podcasters account. Once you publish your show to Spotify for Podcasters, this is a podcast hosting site, so it can also distribute your podcast to the other podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and more. Now, something else that's really cool, I can't actually do it on this recording because your recording does have to be longer than five minutes. This was just an example recording, so I don't have this option here, but... If I head back to a previous podcast that I did, when you're in the edit of your video podcast, you can select this generate show notes button 
And this is going to skim your content and generate keywords, a summary, takeaways, sound bites, even chapter markers for your video podcast that you can just easily copy and paste. You can also use this magic clips feature. This is gonna skim your footage and create social media optimized clips based on your specifications. So you would set the duration that you want, what speaker you wanna focus on, any topics that you wanna highlight, and select generate clips. And this is going to generate clips from your video podcast episode that you can then edit to fit your style. Once you edit all of those clips, you can then download them to publish on your social media accounts and promote your video podcast episode. And there you have it. That is a full guide on how you can set up your podcast no matter where you want to record with however many people. So let me know in the comments, are you stoning on a computer or is a phone more your style? If you like this video or you learned something new, again, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up to let me know and consider subscribing and sticking around for more videos on how to create the best content you can. I'm going to leave a video here that will walk you through how to start a podcast from scratch, step by step. So it'll walk you through everything you need to know from planning to recording, editing, and publishing. Thanks for hanging out with me today. My name is Bridget O'Rourke, and I'll see you next week. Bye.